Hello, I would like to take a few minutes to update you on a series of developments that we're engaged in at Kingspan on our quad core uh, product set. I'll also talk a little bit about the work on Planet Passionate and some of our digital uh, developments. I'm going to start by talking about our new Icon Innovation Centre in Ireland, which we opened uh, last year, and then, as I mentioned, uh, talk about Planet Passionate, the digitalisation summary, and next generation uh, quad core. The overall group strategy is, has a number of components, but for the purposes of what we're talking about here today, there are three distinct pieces. Uh, innovation, digitalization, and planet passionate, and they're all intertwined and linked together. The Icon Innovation Center, which we built uh, just over a year ago and opened it in 2019, located at our head office in um, Kingscourt in Ireland, it's the place where the difficult questions to challenge our industry will get asked and hopefully answered. Areas and topics such as zero carbon, zero waste, digital twins, data analytics, the use of augmented reality, virtual reality, and new types of material. We will all talk about uh, those topics and they're the areas of research that we're engaged in. At, at the building itself is a truly net zero carbon. Lots of the uh, raw materials that was, um, were reused during the construction phase. Uh, we've implemented rainwater harvesting for the capture of all uh, water on site, air pumps for energy, solar PV on the roof, and um, uh, low energy uh, lighting throughout the building. And all of this has led the building to be uh, LEED Gold approved. Inside the building is a prototype lab for next generation insulation a mechanical lab, mechanical product development, and a chemistry lab with state-of-the-art analytical uh, capability, and a digital lab to help with our digital activities. Our Planet Passionate uh, targets, um, the, the, the whole idea behind this is building on our net zero program that we've been engaged in since 2010. And um, the targets and the whole program is linked and associated with the United Nations Sustainability Development uh, Goals. And those numbers are, uh, you can see on the top of the slide. What well, we're, from a Kingsman point of view, is focused on four fundamental areas. Energy, carbon, circularity, and water. I'm not going to read all the details on the slide, but the ability to uh, keep our net zero um, increase our on-site generation of renewable energy uh, to 20%, net zero carbon manufacturing by 2030, and 50% reduction in product CO2 intensity from our primary supply partners by 2030. And all company cars will be e-vehicles by the end of 2025. Our quad-core insulation next generation will utilize recycled PET uh, bottles and zero, zero waste. Uh, to landfill, and we also plan to um, do 100 million litres of rainwater harvested by 2030. A slide here that talks about um, circularity, and Kingspan, we have created this life cycle framework, product circularity framework. Circularity is much more, uh, and indeed sustainability is much more than circularity, and it's much more than just using renewable resources or reusing material or making the material recycled, recycled. We take a much more holistic view, starting with how would we go about doing a lean and circular design using our products, our input materials, our factory processes. How can we extend our products at the end of their first life to um, be used in an extended life basis? And then we have the whole piece around the recycling. So it's a much more comprehensive uh, framework and um, our sustainability and circularity team can uh, update people more on the details behind this. But this is a fundamental framework for how we will, um, what will guide us um, in, in our journey towards uh, true circularity. From a digital point of view, um, there are four overarching uh, programs. We want to have a much more connected business using data. Um, and data is at the heart of what we're trying to do here with creating a fully connected business. 
People talk about BIM and BIM objects and they are vitally important, but they're only one part of the overall digital transformation within construction. Operational excellence so that customers uh, and architects and other uh, people who interact with us uh, can use my account, um, can um, work on a shared tool platform so that there's a sense of all-round operational excellence. And then there's a whole series of work that's going on to make our products much more digitally available. Again, using tools like BIM, BIM content, but also utilizing workflows and so on. And finally, all of that is backed up then by a customer experience in terms of the feedback and the, uh, ultimately in terms of the, the NPS um, score. Now that we have um, talked about ICON and the capabilities that exist to um, make and test and do prototypes, uh, as well as the overall strategy relating to Planet Passionate and to uh, the whole digitalization, I want to spend the next few minutes talking about um, the next generation of quad core and a summary of the types of improvements that we will see on that product uh, set once it gets uh, through the R&D uh, process. The First and most important aspect that we will start with is around the thermal performance. We know today that the current quad core has uh, best in class uh, thermal performance. And we want to drive that uh, forward uh, in the future to make an even better uh, product thermally than exists today. And we know that's very important. Um, because we know that uh, the better lambda will give a better U value and uh, that will allow for much more um, energy efficient uh, buildings and uses of our uh, quad core panels in those buildings. And of course that will result in lifetime energy savings and uh, uh, CO2 uh, reductions. And it's important to state that because today buildings make up uh, in the operational carbon, something like 11% of the total CO2 emitted uh, uh, in the world today. So anything we can do to reduce that, um, that's very important. The um, work that is going on at ICON is obviously confidential and I'm not going to be able to get into uh, too much of the details uh, behind it. But um, it's going to focus on, uh, uh, I suppose, different materials and different makeup of materials that um, will improve the thermal performance. And we will use the prototype press that I mentioned earlier uh, at ICON, and we will use the analytical lab uh, and all the equipment that we have there to be able to develop um, this uh, solution. I suppose the target that we're looking for is to have probably one milliwatt or so um, of uh, better performance compared to the current performance that the uh, quad core currently has that we have in the marketplace. Obviously, in addition to the chemistry, we will look at the process and we will look at how we make the foams and what can improvements can be done in that regard that can have a direct impact on the uh, thermal uh, uh, performance and the cellular um, structure uh, of uh, the next generation quad core. I think it's also important to point out that since quad core you know, has a number of uh, performance characteristic, characteristics, uh, thermal being one of them, fire being another, that whatever solution we end up with has to meet all of the improved criteria that we have set out. So while we might be able to solve something um, that gives a better thermal performance. If it doesn't improve the fire, well, then we can't use it. And that just adds a little, a degree of complication and a degree of um, complexity, but that's what we are uh, very focused on in terms of trying to, um, to, solve, to solve that. Um, we see this as a very important um, part of the ongoing performance improvement of the product. Um, and it's right in line with our uh, Planet Passionate um, program. So moving on 
to speak now about the next um, aspect of this um, uh, next generation quad core, which is focused on fire and smoke, both critically important parameters uh, in terms of the use of our products in, in, in buildings. We know today that the quad core you know, has, has reasonable, reasonably good uh, fire resistance uh, performance values. Um, and uh, nevertheless, we sat down some time ago with um, a group of people um, and uh, sort of sketched out what would really be groundbreaking uh, be in relation to fire uh, resistance. And we um, set out a target based on some feedback and discussions and something that's going to be very challenging for us, but nevertheless will be very interesting to achieve. So we set out um, a target of achieving one hour uh, fire resistance um, uh, initially and develop a program to get that to two hours, again using the fundamental quad core formula. But as I said earlier, the um, fundamental formula that we have must also um, meet the thermal requirements as well. So um, a lot of work has started at ICON um, that uh, is focused on uh, different types of materials, different types of the mixing of materials, um, different types of um, items and, uh, and sometimes new materials that's focused on improving the fire performance of the product. And uh, the prototype press is being used um, to uh, do this and uh, additionally we're also focused on some let's call it mechanical uh, solutions um, in terms of the strength of the foam and some other uh, areas that we can focus on to improve the fire uh, performance. At this point, I should just point out that as part of the focus on innovation within Kingspan, we have um, uh, built and opened a new fire uh, test centre in the UK. It's a little bit tricky because of the current uh, COVID restrictions in terms of visiting and seeing it and so on. But we've invested quite a lot of money there to put in place all of the uh, test equipment that is required to test all sorts of uh, in panels and uh, insulation board to the uh, European and indeed US and uh, other uh, global uh, norms from a fire uh, perspective. The products that we will develop to get this one hour and two hours as part of the R&D uh, program that will be uh, worked, they will all be tested. Um, in that lab and obviously the feedback will go back to the team at ICON and we will have a closed loop on that to see that it is um, working uh, quite well. Um, however, when, when this is completed, um, the uh, product that will achieve the one hour or the two hour of the, the, um, uh, fire resistance um, will get independently uh, tested and all of the test results will be independently validated and of course here in Hungary we have people who can do that as well and uh, we may end up um, using that uh, down the road in the future. The next aspect of this is around smoke and smoke levels and you know we all know the issues associated with smoke when fires can occur so we've had an active program for a long time to reduce the um, uh, smoke uh, performance that uh, the smoke level let's say in, in our products and the next generation of quad core will focus on uh, taking that to another level if you like altogether. Again it's a combination of chemistry, um, processing, mechanical improvements and uh, optimization of formulations etc. We will use the well-known FM4882 as the standard. Um, they have different levels and our target to uh, achieve, uh, to be achieved in this is to achieve uh, 4882 level 1 from a smoke point of view which is the lowest smoke performance, um, the best let's say smoke performance that's, that's available and again um, we have some people working uh, on, on this to ensure that we achieve this but I keep stressing that um, it has to also meet the one hour uh, fire resistance and the thermal on, from, the, from the previous uh, slide. 
Again, we have all of the um, smoke density and other um, items uh, to measure all of this stuff at our, uh, both between our lab in Ireland and the fire centre in the UK. So that's talking about thermal and fire and smoke. And on to look again from a next generation uh, point of view. Um, some very interesting and some exciting uh, uh, items going on in support of, directly in support of the Planet Passionate uh, program for the next generation of quad core. Starting with um, the ability to be able to take waste foam, whether that's in the factory, on the job site, or on the building at the end of its life, and recycle that foam back into a liquid that can be reused to make new foam at particular percentages and so on. We've just confirmed that this works in the lab and you can see on the pictures uh, a, a cup test sample of how it works in the lab. And we're about to make an investment, a couple of investments in recycling centers starting in the UK that will allow us to be able to do this on a more industrial scale. This is very important for us because it effectively stops the use of foam, uh, waste foam, being either burned or put into landfill. And uh, that is something that we have been striving towards. Uh, we've been working with partners to develop and create uh, this solution. As I said, it's been tested in the lab and we now need to um, uh, make it happen, if you like, at an industrial scale and we're very confident we will, we will do that. And <clears throat> I'm not sure when we will be able to offer this uh, locally here in Hungary or in Central Europe, but um, once we industrialize it, you can be sure that it will begin to happen uh, quite, uh, quite, quite quickly. And as I said, you know, the days of throwing um, PIR foam, quad core foam, or other types of uh, foam into landfill or burning it are thankfully coming to an end, which is good news for everyone. The next area that we want to talk about is the higher recycled material uh, content. So. Today we are using recycled PET bottles in some of the forms that we make. Uh, for quad core, we have rolled that out in the US. In the US, and we will expand that in the future. Um, and we're also using it today in some of our PIR uh, forms. And the objective we have is to, through a combination of internal work uh, plus uh, working with suppliers, to continue to increase that uh, recycled content in our. Uh, product in the in the quad core uh, panel going forward. We have a situation, for example, of working with some of our steel suppliers, where there's a huge amount of uh, exciting developments going on in relation to uh, moving away from uh, let's call it traditional energy sources and ways of making steel into a more um, lower carbon, decarbonized type uh, manufacturing process. Um, that will also allow for higher recycled content to be included in the steel that we uh, use in our uh, quad core panels. The last um, <coughs> item is that one that is focused on what we call more renewable chemistry components. So again, in support of Planet Passionate, we have um, an active area of research going on. Uh, it's early stage and it's likely to be the last of all of these developments that I've mentioned that will happen, and it's probably three to five years away, where we would begin to replace some of the chemistry components that's used in our forms with either more natural or more renewable items. Now, one thing that is very clear is that uh, when it comes to sustainability and circularity, there's no one path that is absolutely correct um, in the sense that you can choose a solution around renewable chemistry and it might be very bad for circularity or very bad for the embodied carbon or vice versa. So we have to be very carefully uh, examine and analyze uh, these uh, solutions. But nevertheless, 
We are engaged with our key uh, suppliers and key partners in terms of taking some of the material, including expanding the PET uh, recycle content that I mentioned earlier, to um, effectively replace the current material with renewable uh, material. And the big chemistry people like BASF and Covestro and others are highly engaged in this, in this program, uh, even though it's at an early stage. So they're, they're, they're really the, the summary of the, um, what the next generation of quad core will look like. It'll be better on thermal, it'll be much better on fire, and it will allow for um, full recycling of any waste, higher uh, recycled content, and more renewable chemistry. Now, of course, the question then is, when will this happen? So I think for the thermal and the fire and the smoke, um, we will probably spend most of 2021 um, completing all the uh, analytical work and all the laboratory work and the research work. And I'd hope by the end of the year that we would have that completed and that we would be able to launch the product during 2022. We would do that initially in the UK most likely and then as we have done with um, uh, this generation of quad core then we would launch it um, uh, elsewhere uh, subsequent to uh, 2022. The precise timing of that I'm, I'm not exactly sure about but it'll be somewhere along those uh, along those time frames. And then finally I think the, the, the more complicated um, work that has to be done in terms of shifting towards more renewable chemistry components in conjunction with our chemistry suppliers. That's a more longer term uh, goal and I think if we have that um, completed by 2024 or 2025 um, and be ready to launch it around then, I think that would be an interesting um, <clears throat> time frame. Of course, there are other um, pieces of work that are going on. Um, around using um, uh, mushroom mycelium and other uh, non, uh, if you like, plastic-based uh, uh, materials to be used as the core for insulated panels. But again, you know, they're very early stage. There's lots of work to be done, lots of developments uh, and enhancements and improvements to make sure that whatever solution we come up with in that space is um, as good as what's there today or better in terms of its fire, smoke and thermal performance. But nevertheless, there's, there's a big focus in terms of the next generation of quad core and look forward to having the product launched down the road and on the road. And uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to me today. <laughs>